Former President Jacob Zuma is challenging a High Court ruling declaring his release on parole being unlawful. Zuma, to remind you, served less than two months of his 15-month contempt of court sentence. Well, the Helen Sussman Foundation, AFRI Forum and the DA wants the parole decision set aside. So that's what we're going to court for today. Senior reporter of UM Tila joining us in Bloemfontein. Uh, just first of all, before we just uh, get some background to how we got here and what's expected as well, the ramifications. Uh, security, let's talk about that for a second. Are we expecting the former president himself to be making an appearance? Well, Gary, judging by a tweet from the Jacob Zuma Foundation, they shared a picture yesterday uh, saying that the legal team was ready for today's proceedings. And in fact, they did suggest that uh, the former president, Jacob Zuma, could be in attendance with his medical team here at the Supreme Court of Appeal, depending on the icy manga wing weather. So there is a bit of security uh, cordoning off even the road um, that has, of course, the Supreme Court of Appeal. Uh, we've seen even correctional services members that are just um, in circulation yeah, and the cars are being stopped from coming in and luckily of course we the media so they let us through. Of course we're expecting then uh, of course that appeal by former President Jacob Zuma to be heard here. Yeah, uh, spotlight at the Supreme Court of Appeal with uh, the stakes high for former President Jacob Zuma if that high court decision, that ruling, that December one is upheld, the former president could be back in prison for the next 13 months. You remember that we were there in escort last Last year in July, when the former president handed himself uh, over to the correctional services there. We do understand it was just days later where he fell ill uh, and he was hospitalized for the majority of his sentence there. He was released on medical parole two months later. That is at the hands of the Correctional Services National Commissioner Arthur Fraser, even though the medical advisory, uh, well, the medical parole advisory board said that the former president was fit enough uh, to. Uh, continue serving his full sentence. But Arthur Fraser released him nonetheless. Hence then, AFRI Forum went to court together with the Helen Susan Foundation as well as the Democratic Alliance where we saw then that decision uh, overturned by the High Court um, in Gauteng in Pretoria saying that that decision was irrational and illegal. Hence now, we at the Supreme Court of Appeal where the former President Jacob Zuma will be appealing that December ruling. And I see as well uh, online reports that uh, DA federal leader John Steenhuizen is uh, going to be attending uh, the sitting in the SCA uh, to hear Zuma's appeal as well. So uh, they're coming from an angle along with, the, uh, uh, with AFRI Forum and the Helen Sussman Foundation that the former president did not, and I quote, meet the criteria to be released, that he could have been treated for any health concerns within the prison system. That's, of course, what the Medical Parole Advisory Board also said. Said that the former president was fit enough to serve his entire sentence uh, behind bars. But, of course, that was overlooked and he was released on medical paroles by Arthur Fraser, the commissioner, um, well, the Correctional Services Commissioner. We are expecting, as you mentioned, uh, the DA leader, uh, joined by Roy Jenkinson, who is, of course, the DA leader in the Free State. We did hear them say that, in fact, um, his release last year on medical parole was unfair and he, it was favoured, given that he was in his political stature, rather than the ordinary person. So they, uh, they're against that and saying that the president should serve his entire sentence behind bars. Of course, this is at the backdrop of, uh, of that uh, court case, that trial court case um, that is happening in October as well. So depending on what may happen here today, given that the judgment would be reserved, the president could uh, go back to court for the next 13 months. Back in, in prison, I beg your pardon. Yeah, it gets very complicated as well. I remember Tula Siswe Similani going through a lot of the, the legal wranglings of this. He's our future uh, attorney, is our Tula Siswe Similani. And talking about this, uh, we all knew it at the time. It is Section 75-7A of the Correctional Services Act says that the commissioner can, and I quote, place under correctional supervision or day parole or grant parole to a prisoner serving a sentence of less than 12 months. So the issue here comes into not just what the law says, but as you know, covering these court cases, it's all about the interpretation of the law and what the judge, the presiding judge, how they interpret uh, what the law is actually saying as well. It's all quite complicated, a lot of gray area, isn't it? 
A lot of grey areas. In fact, I remember when we were there, when the former president was arrested, well, handing himself over at the Escort Court. Uh, the following day, we spoke to correctional services, and they suggested that, uh, given that there was no uh, time set in terms of uh, when he could be released on parole, um, the minimum he needed to serve was a quarter of that sentence. So we don't know, as you mentioned, there are very, a lot of grey areas in terms of what could happen next. But we do understand, of course, that he was released on medical parole after serving two months of that 15-month sentence uh, handed down by the Constitutional Court for Contempt of uh, Court. Remember that the former president um, didn't go to the Zondo Commission, which then uh, led to him um, handed that 15-month sentence. He only served two of those months before being released on medical parole, and that's against the advice from the uh, Medical Parole Advisory Board that said that the former president was fit enough uh, to serve his sentence. But of course, Arthur Fraser released him nonetheless. Hence, now we saw that December ruling. Now, of course, the former president is now appealing that, and we are most likely going to see him here, given that statement by the Jacob Zuma Foundation. And we wait to see what comes out of this court. We're all going to be watching it very closely, especially uh, you, uh, senior reporter Aviwa Mtila. We're back to you at court a little bit later. At this point, unclear uh, if the former president himself is going to be appearing at the court as well, as Aviwa says, all to do with uh, the cold weather. Uh, in the area. So we wait to see if the former president will be arriving. There is, however, some security there if that were to happen.